Welcome to the Devin Nunes Podcast. Breaking through the political noise, separating fact from fiction. From the San Joaquin Valley, the breadbasket of the solar system. Here is your host, Devin Nunes. This is Devin Nunes. Welcome back to a very special edition podcast coming to you from Fresno, California, right across the street from Fresno State University, the heart of the valley. Uh, the home of the Bulldogs, and we're coming to you from Wahoo's Tacos, outside, social distancing, doing everything that Newsom is forcing us to do, except I took off my face mask just so I could talk to you on camera. Uh, this week, a uh, very important addition because we're bringing on Fresno City Councilman Gary Bredefeld, who has not only served on the city council in the 90s to the early 2000s, then took a 16-year break uh, and came back onto the council. And a lot has changed, this movement towards socialism, uh, just last weekend, we had this uh, strike forces from Governor Newsom that have come in and began hitting businesses. And, you know, right here, we're coming to you outside uh, the business here at Wahoo's Tacos. Uh, they can no longer serve inside at all, even whether it's one person or 50 people or 100 people, they can have zero people. Outdoors, they have to do the social distancing. And so uh, many businesses all over the state of California, I know even all over the country that have face these draconian rules uh, are really in, in a lot of trouble. So uh, always go out and support uh, your local restaurant and uh, try to be considerate of others. As always, if you're sick, always stay stay home and go see your doctor uh, because we know this much, COVID spreads very, very quickly. Uh, but the other thing that's been spreading very, very quickly is socialism. Socialism spread all over this country. Uh, for a long time, it's centered in the, our nation's New, big cities, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, the places you would typically expect to see it. Um, I didn't think in my lifetime that we would see a movement towards socialism here in the San Joaquin Valley, where I represent. Uh, but the city of Fresno, which is the sixth largest city in the state of California, kind of a mid-sized city, uh, from the, you, I think you'd consider it a mid-sized city from throughout uh, the United States, uh, it's had a strange shift towards socialism. I think if you would have said years ago that Democrats maybe would be conservative and maybe conservative Democrats would be elected here, I would have said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's possible if Republicans make mistakes. But I never thought it would move towards a socialist takeover uh, like it has been. So we've had a fighter uh, here in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, a, a conservative Republican who's done a hell of a job calling out uh, the politicians uh, where they've continued to make mistake after mistake. And uh, Gary Bredefeld, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, standing tall and being one of the only voices of reason. Uh, and not only have you been a voice of reason, but you haven't been afraid to get out there and speak your mind from the very beginning of this pandemic. And I think you've tried to come up with constructive solutions, uh, whether it be you know the total mistreatment. I remember you talking about why was it okay for people to rush into Costco with no, no face masks, by right. the way, no social distancing, but the little mom and pop furniture store was shut down. You brought that to light. Sure. Uh, you brought that, you know, and, and it really went all over the country. Uh, just the mistreatment of certain types of businesses versus the big box store businesses. Uh, now uh, what's happened is, is that we've really got into this, uh, these strike forces are reminiscent of Nazi Gestapo. Um, over last weekend, um, many restaurants in my district were, were essentially raided. Um, and it was, it was hot here at the time. It was, yep. uh, you know, 107 over the weekend. Dry heat, not like uh, what you would see with the humidity. Uh, but I think what a lot of these restaurants were doing, if an older couple came in, wanted to get a hamburger, cheeseburger, or whatever, they set them up very, you know, isolated by themselves where there was some AC. They were keeping the windows open. I mean, this is, this is insanity, um, I never thought I'd be living in a state where this would be happening, where the governor would actually, I mean, they actually call it a strike force, right? Yep. So tell us, uh, let's just talk first about these strike forces, and then we'll move on into kind of how the socialists have, have taken over in the city. Well, here. I think you said the right word. It's draconian. A lot of it is unconstitutional. Um, and it's been unconstitutional from the get-go, where you just arbitrarily shut down businesses. There's no data to support shutting down this restaurant or this nail salon or a church. Uh, there's no evidence that says uh, spikes are occurring in these restaurants. 
uh, they just decide in, in California, Governor Newsom decides that he's going to shut down uh, businesses because politicians feel like, well, like they have uh, to look, do something. And, a, and a, good, a good example of that is is that uh, just north of here in Madera County, there's a small number, I mean, just minutes from here, really. I mean, God, we're yep. probably only 15 minutes from, uh, there's a few wineries. Right. Um, they're not, they're not uh, you know, well-known wineries. Um, but, you know, they get a few people here and there that will stop in at the wineries. They got closed. Yep. The wineries in Madera County got closed. Meanwhile, the wineries that are the more pristine, prestigious areas like Napa Valley, where, you know, Newsom, you know, happens to you know, be a partner in, in a winery. Uh, and look, and I, you know, and I'm a partner in, in, in three wineries and my family was in the great business and, and I, you know, own a small percentage of, of some wineries and, you know, and they were not closed in this most recent round. Now they are uh, today. Um, but I thought it was so unfair. Why would you close down wineries here in Madera County, but not in the rest of the state? How, how did they, they just make it up? Where, where did they come up with it? Well, they make it up. Uh, and it's uh, politicians who feel like they have to be doing something. And so they shut down businesses. And we also know that, of course, this state is very anti-business. Um, and that's what we're seeing. And we have it here locally in, in the city of Fresno. We have our own strike teams. It's called Code Enforcement. They go out. They find people. They shut people down. They've been doing it ever since the uh, pandemic started. And I think we both can agree that the first couple of weeks when we really didn't know what was going on, everybody had to see what was going we, on. Well, we didn't want our hospitals to be overrun. We, we, were, we were getting these pictures from China. Um, and I've been doing a long China series on the on the podcast here for my listeners. They know that. Um, but, you know, they were erecting you know, hospitals within a week and, you know, they were showing, you know, you know uh, people were flooding into them. So, you know, we really didn't know at that time, you know, the sure. origins of this virus, what was behind it, were the Chinese behind it? Why was the World Health Organization lied to? Why did they they hide this from us? Why were they continuing to let flights? And, you know, thank goodness, you know, the president of the United States actually acted quickly to shut yep. the flights off Absolutely. Uh, from China as quickly as, as possible. Um, probably the best decision. You know, he says this a lot, but it probably was the best decision uh, that he made. It was real leadership. It's like, OK, we don't know what's going on. So let's number one, let's close off these flights as we're seeing, you know, hospitals built sure. over in a, in a couple of weeks. But here we never saw that. We saw, you know, people are in the hospital. Even today, there's people in the hospital with, sure. with COVID. Um, and in fact, the hospitals were sitting empty for the better part of three months. Now what you're seeing is, is actually the hospitals are filled up, the ICUs are, but sadly with people who weren't treated properly for whatever condition they had over the last three months because they didn't want to come in for that heart issue or the lung issue or the diabetes issue or the hip uh, replacement issue. And now we're seeing, and you know, sadly people who let those, what would have been you know, fairly simple procedures at the time, and you could take the the appropriate precautions at the time, went untreated. That's right. And now the hospitals here are, are full with some COVID patients, but also the ICUs at least. But we're still not allowing the hospitals and all the doctor's offices to fully open for these so-called elective procedures. These draconian lockdowns, these unconstitutional lockdowns that took place had untoward numerous side effects that hurt people even more than COVID did. Uh, children aren't in school. We don't know about the child abuse. It's going unreported. Kids are being abused, domestic violence, crime. Uh, in our state, uh, we have a governor who's releasing 10,000 criminals to avoid COVID. The crime's going up. Are they going to shelter in place? Of course not. Uh, you're talking about people who didn't get cancer uh, uh, biopsies detected. Uh, that that's a, an unside a side effect. Uh, all kinds of things have occurred as a result of government intervening. When we knew we weren't going to be overrun, the hospitals were not going to be overrun. We right. knew this after two weeks, and yet now we're back again in the state of California, where you have a governor who's shutting down businesses in an arbitrary fashion. People who have done more than they possibly can to make sure they're safe, following all the CDC guidelines. And we've always told people follow the CDC guidelines, uh, even though they have followed them. They're being shut down and destroyed again with these strike forces that he's he's put out. So give our uh, listeners, uh, Gary, because we've got uh, not just here in the San Joaquin Valley, but uh, all over the country and the globe. Um, give us some 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 of your constituents that you represent. You're you're in the north part of the city of Fresno. There's yep. seven council districts. Yes. Um, I, I know your constituents have just been horrified by this, but yep. but share couple of those stories of people that you've been trying to help and deal with these these strike forces that are coming in and, and trying to shut them down. 
Well, we have uh, restaurants that have tried to stay open. We've you've had furniture businesses that have tried to stay open, nail salons that have tried to stay open. And when they finally got open, they followed all the guidelines. They've made it extremely safe. They've done the social distancing. They have uh, wearing gloves, wearing the masks, and yet they've still been shut down. Uh, people are horrified. They've shut down churches. You can't sing in the state of California. I don't know if people know. You actually had the governor say, we don't want you to sing in churches. Well, we're also tearing down statues of priests here in this country. You know, the, uh, the, the Father Sarah, who was a founding father of this state who came here and developed some of the earliest infrastructure. And in fact, we just burnt down one of those old churches. Somebody yes. burned it down, which is likely one of these Antifa BLM movements that that's responsible for burning this down. And nobody's saying a damn thing uh, that's right. about it. Well, I'll tell you, Devin, I will be in church this Sunday. There is a church that will be open. I will be there. I will be singing. And uh, people have to stand up. The silent majority has to be silent no more. We all have to speak up. It's not enough for uh, Congressman Nunes or Gary Bradefeld or others to speak up. Everybody has to fight back because our country is at stake. And it really is that degree of seriousness. Our country, our way of life, uh, our values are all at stake here. Yeah. And, you know, what uh, and with all that said, you and I totally agree and the fake news will try to to take advantage of this and and they'll make things up about this but uh i've said from the very beginning this is a super contagious virus yes it's super contagious and if you have an underlying condition you do not want to get this and if we would have focused all of our effort on concentrating on those seniors in our population, or in a, you don't have to be a senior, but if you're unhealthy, even if you're 20 or 30 or 40 years old, you know, it could be drug abuse, could be diabetes, could be a, you know, a lot of different sure. issues. If you have those issues, you want to make sure that, you know, like I have a 100-year-old grandmother. I've been very, very careful. I've only seen her a couple times through this whole crisis. I, st I stay away as far as, as far as I can. Um, you know, and she doesn't really have any underlying conditions other than she's 100 years old. Right. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, that you and I both agree on this, and that's something that everybody can agree on. And why did we not, all these trillions of dollars that we spent, have we focused it on that? Correct. Right? Like, so so say you're a teacher, for example, that has some underlying conditions. Look, we don't want to put you in danger. You don't need to go back and, and teach. You, you know, we probably need to put you on some type of medical leave. But we don't have to shut down the whole freaking school system. No. Um, and, and, you know... I know a lot of teachers, including my wife, that the challenge has been when they go to this online schooling, you have a number of children who disappear. They don't pop up online. Nope. The, the teachers, the schools, they try to locate the parents. You know, once you find the parents, oh, yeah, yeah, my kid's doing the work, and they've never even logged on. Well, so, you, so, I mean, they, they essentially, school ended for, for some of these kids, unfortunately, yeah. back in March, and now they're talking about not going back again. Yep. And, and for and you know right now in the state of California as we as to, as of today, zero deaths under the age of eighteen. And you know COVID. a little perspective on this. You know we had a pandemic in two thousand nine yeah. uh, under President Obama. It was the swine flu. We had, I had it by the way. Yeah, I remember I you saying. It. Yep. And there was sixty eight million people in this country. Sixty eight million people infected with the swine flu. Mm -hmm. We have three point three million with COVID. Just some perspective. We never shut down schools. We never shut down businesses. Nobody was required to wear a mask. Uh, we have the flu every year. 30 to 80,000 people die every year from the flu. We have 30 to 60 million, 60 million infected in the United States every year. We never shut down the school. Don't shut down churches. Don't put on masks. We accept it's a part of life. Unfortunate that there are people who die from it. And we clearly have a serious problem with COVID. But some perspective, we didn't have death tickers on on the major networks and case tickers uh on the major networks. well we, we had those respect. we had those this is the this is this is what's so outrageous we had the death uh the death counters right until the protests happened right then they went off the screen then, then the protest and the rioting and blm and antifa covid was gone yeah and there was no social distancing most of the time they weren't even wearing a mask or they were in the mask uh, uh wrong and, you know, they were you know out in the streets everywhere, setting things on fire, tearing down yep. statues. I mean, that's still going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, and then all of a sudden that kind of that that kind of that fake news story well, was a real news story um, that except they weren't calling them rioters. They were calling them protesters, but they were really rioting, breaking the law. So that right when that began to 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 subside. 
COVID was back again. Yep. And now we're inundated, inundated with it again. And, you know, I think the frustrating part for me is why not? It seems like the leadership, you know, for sure in this state, not all states, they're running around like chickens with their head cut off and they're making it up as they go. Right. Versus versus just let's look at this. Are the hospitals full? You know, and I think nobody's actually looked at should we even be putting these COVID patients in, in a hospital or should we be you know, creating regional centers? Should we pick one hospital where they all go to so that the rest of the hospitals and elective surgeries can open up completely so people have some comfort level of going into the hospital where there's not going to be hopefully any any COVID patients? It's uh, it just it's mind boggling to me. It always needed to be driven by policy and data. It's not been driven by that. Uh, it's been driven by politics and politicians who feel like they have to do something. And I've said they're drunk with power, mm-hmm. whether it's on the national level, state level, a local level. It's politicians who are drunk with power and feel like they have to do something. And so they do the heavy hand of government. And that's right. what it's done. And what we did, what do we do? We threw 44 million people out of work by government. Right. right. So let's move into uh, I want to talk about. The city of Fresno, Mm -hmm. because I think this will be interesting to the international audience. Most people know the San Joaquin Valley has been an area that's been trending Republican and conservative, largely because of kind of the extreme environmental agenda that's come out of the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay. They've cut off our water supply. They ended our timber industry. Now, you know, we have all these forest fires. We've talked about this on on the podcast before about how a lot of these forest fires are simply because we're not maintaining our forests. We're not maintaining. We're not allowing cattle to be out and graze on a lot of this land. Uh, so a lot of this is in this extreme environmental agenda that was really a socialist agenda because it's about control that the Democratic Party embraced 20 years ago. Yep. It's really led to an exodus of, of Democrats uh, from the San Joaquin Valley. But we've had this strange phenomenon now that I would thought I would have never seen where they're not just, you know, conservative Democrats used to be get, to get elected here. But now we've passed conservative Democrat. That's not even, you don't even want to label, if you label yourself conservative Democrat, you don't even make it through a primary. No, you're if out you of say the party. Conservative, That's you're, right. you're, you're out, you're gone. And now you have socialists. They're embracing socialism. You have, you have people who embrace socialism uh, now on the city council. So I know in the, in the 90s uh, when you were on this, I, I, don't, I think you had a lot of Democrats that were on the council, yeah. but you didn't have any socialists, did you? No, no, absolutely not. And uh, unfortunately, we have people elected here in in the Valley who uh, have a radical agenda. Uh, We have several uh, uh, on our council who went and did a pilgrimage to AOC in Washington, D.C. And everyone knows, unfortunately, AOC and her politics, which is totally socialism and communism. And unfortunately, we see that going across the country. I mean, we saw Texas where Ted Cruz only won by 6% against Beto O'Rourke, who wants to take their guns. So um, the indoctrination has started early in in, uh, grammar school and elementary school and continues through college. And I've met with the college kids you have, and it's shocking to to see what they say. They support socialism. Uh, They hate capitalism. They think big government is is great. Uh, And they will find out, unfortunately, if that ever comes to fruition. And, And let's all hope and pray and fight for that not to happen. And frankly, uh, I think President Trump is really the firewall to prevent that from happening because, God forbid, this country elects Joe Biden. Well, look, there's there's got to be, you know, we don't we don't get out very much now because of the COVID. It's very hard to interact with people. Sometimes when I'm traveling back to Washington, D.C., while the Democrats are mainly hiding in their bunker in their basement, not voting, doing this bogus proxy voting. But uh, every couple of weeks I've had to travel back to Washington. That's the only place I actually get to see random Americans. They come up to me, they talk to me. And I mean, it's always the same thing. It's like, what the hell's going on? Are we going to be all right? Like people are shocked. And the few places that I do get out uh, here in the Valley where I, where I see people because I'm trying to do all the social distancing stuff, everybody has the same thing. People are calling my office like, what on earth is going on? Like, why are we being shut down? Why, you know, what was here at this restaurant? Why, what was wrong with having, you know, it probably seats. 150 people are right inside this restaurant. That's right. Why couldn't you have 50 people in the restaurant? Correct. You should be able to. You should. Um, so I assume you're getting the same thing. Same thing. I get it all the time. And, and people contacted me all the time. What, what, what can I do 
to stop this. And I say you just have to continue to speak up. Don't be silent. Uh, let people know how you feel. Let people know where you stand. Let people know what you want in government. Um, and that's, it really comes down to that. The silent majority cannot be silent anymore. There really is too much at stake across the country uh, for our way of life. And it's being attacked. We're seeing it. The statues are coming down. Uh, there's a cancel culture right. now. Right. It started with, it started with okay, uh, you know, you had an incident where a black uh, African American yep. was was murdered. Police officer, it happens. Um, you know, going to be prosecuted like like it like always happens. You know, you're always making improvements with you know with the police departments. But that went into well. Now we need to get rid of the Confederate generals. Now look, I'm not from the South. My you know mm-hmm. family wasn't even you know I'm you know lifelong California. My family came to California, sure. uh, immigrated here, and uh, you know I, I could care less. But you know I'm pretty sure there's a reason why. You know, statues of these people were erected at the time because a lot of these, you know, it was a, is a way to put the country back together. It was a it was a, plan, a chance to heal. And as you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, when you're in a military, um, you know, you can be subscripted or you, you know that's that's your job, that's your livelihood. You know, you you are trained to follow orders, and so you know, I, I'm not saying that you don't have to have. Uh, that if, if locals want to change whatever statues sure. they have up, great, have at it. But to have a national movement that started with the Confederacy issues, um, which most of us don't even have a clue, right, and, and have no background in any of this, um, to then to where we're now tearing down, talking about tearing down uh, Thomas Jefferson, mm-hmm. George Washington, the yeah. founders of our, our country, Abraham Lincoln. Fed, Frederick Douglass, mm-hmm. you know, who was one of the African American was a, was a, a pillar and a leader of the African American community, anti slavery. His statue got tore down too. I know Ulysses Grant. Look, I, I agree. Uh, if people don't want a Confederate uh, flag, if they don't want a statue, there's a process to get rid of it. It's a democratic process. You don't show up with ropes uh, right. at night or during the day and tear things down. Uh, we have to have the rule of law. It cannot be ruled by mob. Uh, that's not what the United States is all about. So I certainly understand people's sensitivities and if they want to change things. But we have a democratic process right. and we should all believe in the rule of law. And the law should be applied to everyone equally. Yeah, I mean, like, all the, you should not be able to go anywhere in this country. If you, if I would have, if you would have told me a couple months ago that, that the Democrats were going to be embracing BLM and TIFA, uh, a, a new city formed within our new country within the city of Seattle and statues being torn down in the, in the, in the, in, in broad daylight. Right. Um, I would have, I would have laughed at you. I, I would have said, you know, if that was the case, if that was the case, Donald Trump would be up by 20 points over Biden, who still has really yet to come out of his, out of his basement. So I think there's something bigger going on here. I think it's going to, the truth has to get its boots on. I think those independent voters that are out there that are watching this mainstream media, watching what's coming on their devices. I think we have a real challenge with that going into this next election um, that we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to get this message out one mind, one soul at a time, because as we've seen, uh, even here in the city of Fresno, um, socialist socialism is, is creeping in. And, it's- I, and I'll tell you something. One of the things that I've always uh, said that Donald Trump got exactly right. And look, he's I support him 100 uh, percent. Can people criticize him? Of course, he's, he's brash. He's from New York. I understand that I grew up in New York as well. Uh, but what he got right was the fake news media. And now he's calling them the corrupt media. And he's again right. Because the media is corrupt. Uh, they have a complete agenda. It's not even hidden anymore. They used to hide it. It's not even hidden anymore. Right, right. And people need to understand that there's an agenda going on in this country. Whether it's a Russia collusion or um, it's uh, what they do with COVID versus other illnesses and how they portray things. Whether it's supporting rioting, which is what they do. Uh, people need to understand there's a lot of bad things going on in the country. And again, the silent majority has to speak up. They yeah. have to speak up because they are think, the majority. And we have to speak up not only, uh, but we have to speak up not for our only for ourselves and our families, but we need to make sure that our neighbors mm-hmm. uh, and our and our um, uh, you know fellow citizens understand what's at stake here and what's actually happening. That's going to yeah. be the key for the next few months 
um, because it's those people that, and, and look, this is their right as Americans. You know, they, they expect to be safe. Yeah. They don't want to be bothered by politics. They want to, you know, just take their kids to soccer games and baseball practice, and they just want to live their lives. They don't like to deal with politics like you and I, you Absolutely. and I like to do with public policy. Absolutely. But it's those people who ultimately are going to make the decision in this, this election, and it's those people who have to come back to normalcy, understand that we cannot have a country that's led by a mob that where you have a political party that's been taken over by ex an extreme ideology, a socialist communist ideology that's allowing for all things to, you know, defund the police. Yeah, it's, defund it's, the it's, police. It's total, total insanity. Yeah, and we see that all across the country. We've, we've had it here. We've had lots of emails about defund the police. We are not going to defund the police in Fresno, California. I can tell you that. Although you might have some, I mean, the city council, the makeup of it, you might have of, of the seven of you. Oh, you might. There are efforts already to yeah. uh, defund it to some degree. We, yeah. There's a thing called the Homeless Task Force. They're trying to defund that uh, with the police. So uh, we will fight that. I don't think ultimately in the end the, the police department is going to be defunded. They may maneuver some Here money. in the city of Fresno. Here in the city of Fresno. Yeah. We know in other cities it's uh, we've seen it's already yeah. happened, and they've uh, – it's been unanimous in some cities across the right. country. So, um, yeah, we have to continue to fight that. No question about it. Well, Gary, uh, thank uh, thank you so much for uh, your willingness to stand up and be heard. Um, you've been a, a voice out there in the wilderness. I think a lot of people have looked to you uh, speaking the ground truth mm -hmm. of what's actually going on here and you know, the small businesses and the people that work at these small businesses, like right here at Wahoo's Taco here in, here in Fresno. Uh, they're relying on your voice because you're their, you're the closest person uh, to you know, to government, and yeah. it's your people that are coming in and that work really should be working for you as a city councilman coming in and shutting down some of these businesses. Um, it's been it's been uh, great to watch you, and I oh, applaud uh, uh, what you're doing, sticking up for the working the working man here in this in this. Well, country. I appreciate it. The, they are the backbone of our entire country, and uh, I, I take it very seriously. And we're in a battle. We are in a real battle, a cultural war battle, uh, a battle for the spirit of our country, for the values, and frankly, for our children. I mean, I'm very concerned about our children and their future uh, in this country. So we have a, a battle, whether it's on the local, the state, or the national level. And I appreciate all that you're do doing, too, as well, Congressman. Well, keep, keep up the fight. Thank you, Dev. This is Devin Nunes. I want to thank you for listening. It's uh, always going to be a challenging time, but uh, I hope this week we brought you some ground truth of what's really happening out on the ground from the people who have to deal with it on an everyday basis. Devin Nunes, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Devin Nunes podcast. We invite you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And remember, you can download this podcast on iTunes or at DevinNunes.com. Storm clouds been gathering so long, I don't know. The darkness around us leaves no easy road. We started wandering with that. Dreams. It whips the dust up and rains pouring down. Good people struggling in every hometown. We started wondering if we even matter at all. We'll take that hard road to happier days. Trial by fire like this. It's nothing hard working family can fix. We've got the power to save it all here in our hands. We'll take that hard road to happier days. Cause we kept our We, the people, free.
not afraid. That's why they call her the home of the brave. With a prayer and a purpose, we're already half the way there. We'll take that hard road to happier days. Cause we kept our American faith. Paid for by Devin Nunes Campaign Committee.